you Sally for playing us into our service this morning which is morning worship on the 20th of September. We pray as always or God will bless us wherever we are as we worship him together. Our service as always is based on worship at home. Before we begin we're going to sing our first hymn. Guide me O thou great redeemer. trust in him. O Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our psalm this morning is number 145, reading the first eight verses. I will exalt you, O God, my King and bless your name for ever and ever. Every day when I bless you, and praise your name for ever and ever. Great is the Lord, and highly to be praised. His greatness is beyond all searching out. One generation shall praise your works to another, and declare your mighty acts. They shall speak of the majesty of your glory, and I will tell of you your wonderful deeds. They will speak of the might of your marvellous acts, and I will also tell of your greatness. They shall pour forth the story of your abundant kindness, and joyfully sing of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and merciful, long-suffering and of great goodness. Glory to the Father, Father and, and to the, the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, and shall, shall be forever. forever. Amen. Patricia is now going to bring us our first reading. The first reading is from Philippians chapter 1, 
verses 21 to the end. For to me, living is Christ and dying is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labour for me, and I do not know which I prefer. I am hard pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary for you. Since I am convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with all of you for your progress and joy in the faith, so that I may share abundantly in your boasting in Christ Jesus when I come to you again. Only live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent and hear about you, I will know that you are standing firm in one spirit, striving side by side with one mind for the faith of the gospel, and are in no way intimidated by your opponents. For them this is evidence of their destruction, but of your salvation. And this is God's doing, for he has graciously granted you the privilege not only of believing in Christ, but of suffering for him as well, since you are having the same struggle that you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from Matthew chapter 20, beginning to read at the first verse. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire labourers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the labourers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. About five o'clock, he went out and found others standing around, and he said to them, Why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, you also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the labourers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. We're now going to go over to High Lee, where Reverend Trish Cope is going to bring us her reflection on our second reading. All of you watching out there will have had the experience of being an employee or perhaps of being an employer, taking on and paying staff. Surely we all know it makes sense to get paid for the amount of work you do. There will be those of you like me who've been an employee and have expected to get paid for what you do, pro rata. When I dropped from full-time work five days a week, part-time three days a week. I didn't expect to get paid the same amount and I didn't. 
And by the same token, when I increased my days and went from three days up to five days, I expected to pay, get paid more. And I did. And if I hadn't, supposing I got paid the same for doing five days' work as three days' work, well, would I have done that? Hmm, possibly not. And there will be those of you listening who are employers. What do you expect to pay? Do you expect to pay those who work longer, more, and vice versa? I'm sure you do. I'm sure that you may well think, if I paid my part-time staff the same as full-time staff, well, I'd never get anyone to work full-time. Surely, we get paid for what we do. Surely, this vineyard owner is a very strange employer. But remember, what we have just heard is not an example of agricultural management or part of an employer's handbook for administration. That's not what Jesus is providing. It's a parable. You might well wonder why the vineyard owner behaved as he did. Surely that was not good management and certainly not a good incentive scheme for workers. But this is not a factual account of a real event. This is a parable. Yes, the vineyard owner's actions are odd by human standards, but this vineyard owner represents God, and God is odd. His ways are not our ways. As the prophet Isaiah said, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor my ways your ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. So let's just remember who Jesus is telling this parable to and why. This parable is addressed to the close company of twelve disciples and would surely have stayed in their minds just because it is so odd. Surely, no employer in his right mind would behave like this, paying the same wage, whatever the amount of work done, no matter how deserving the workers were. Such an unexpected end would ensure the parable made a memorable impact. So why does Jesus tell them this parable? The disciples have just asked Jesus what their rewards will be. We have given up a lot to follow you, they say good steady work as fishermen, family businesses, a well remunerated if somewhat dodgy job as a tax collector. So Peter asks Jesus, look Lord, we have left everything and followed you. What then will we have? Jesus sees that they need to learn a lesson. They need to recognize that everyone is equally precious to God, that there's no special reward for hard work or long service. No one is favoured more because of what they do or for how long they do it. The chance to serve God and each other is like all our blessings, a precious gift. We all need to learn that God's grace and goodness doesn't work in human ways. God gives despite of what we do. We cannot earn his grace. We can only be thankful for his gracious generosity. God's blessing to us isn't diminished because he gives the same to others. If we see God's gifts to us as earned by us, we need to think again. God's gifts are not offered according to our good service, but simply given to us in love. God will never be in our debt because of how much we have served him, nor will he come under our direction acting according, according to human terms and conditions. God's ways are not our ways, nor his thoughts our thoughts. And this parable tells us that we need to think less about our rights and entitlement and more about generosity, mercy and goodness. Let us just pray briefly in the words of Saint Ignatius Loyola. Teach us, good Lord, to serve you as you deserve, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek for rest, 
to labour and not to ask for any reward save that of knowing that we do your will. Amen. Thank you, Trish. And now we're going to stay in High Lee, where Stuart Jackson is going to bring us our intercessions. Thank you, Trish. And now we're going to stay in High Lee, where Stuart Jackson is going to bring us our intercessions. Thank you, Stuart. And now let us say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. In five, 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 six. Yeah. Right. You've got to say the thing again. I know, yes, I'm going to say yes. We've got time. Yeah. Right. And not do the Lord's Prayer. Thank you, Stuart, for your leading us in our intercessions. And now we are going to sing our final hymn this morning. Final hymn is, O oh Jesus, I have promised to serve thee to the end. Thank you. 
closing prayer. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst us and remain with us and with those we love, now and evermore. Amen. Amen. Mm. God, we thank you that you have brought us safely to the beginning of this day. Keep us, keep us from falling into sin or running into danger. Order us in all our doings and guide us to do always what is righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us come with openness to express our concerns for the Church and the world, to the God of compassion and gracious understanding. Loving Father, whenever we start to get offended by your generosity or open-mindedness, give us the grace to repent and join your rejoicing. Guard the Church against self-righteousness and all rules and limits which you would not own, but keep always before us the rule of love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, increase in us love for all nations, especially those which have to tolerate conflict and disaster. As well as the Covid pandemic, we pray for all leaders in the world that they will serve the people of their countries with love and justice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, as we go through the harvest time and prepare to celebrate, we give thanks to our farmers and growers for keeping us fed through these difficult times and we pray that they can get through the winter after the poor harvests. Loving Father, we also pray for all workers that are coming out of furlough, who are anxious about returning to the workplace and also those that are facing redundancy. Like the landowner of the vineyard, bless all employers with the spirit of fairness and grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Father, we pray all who are ailing, whether of body or mind, and in a moment of silence, let us think of anyone personal to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we give thanks for all who have been faithful labourers in your harvest. May we with them rejoice in your love and generosity in your everlasting kingdom. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, 
Jesus Christ. Amen. And the collect for 15th Sunday after Trinity. God, who in generous mercy sent the Holy Spirit upon your church in the burning of your love, grant that your people may be fervent in the fellowship of the gospel, that always abiding in you, they may be found steadfast in faith and active in service. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And shall we all join together in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Stuart, for your leading us in our intercessions. And now we are going to sing our final hymn this morning. Final hymn is, O oh Jesus, I have promised to serve thee to the end. I shall not 
or our closing prayer. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst us and remain with us and with those we love, now and evermore. Amen. Amen.